Today, the rising rates a property shock. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, World Notice Post covering finance and property news. In this show, I want to explore the UK situation as an object lesson to other places also facing the same pressures due to higher rates as inflation gets embedded. The Bank of England is deploying shock and awe tactics now in a bid to shake the economy out of its current state of inflation as they lifted rates by 0.5% this week to 5%. That's the highest rate in many years. And with the markets now expecting even higher rates by the end of the year to perhaps 6% and an incoming recession. Inflation is becoming embedded in the system with little signs of it subsiding. But there will be consequences as further financial hardship is expected for many millions of households. And those at the lower end of the income scale with variable rate mortgages or who are in the process of remortgaging will be the hardest hit. In response, regulators and politicians are offering comforting words. Mounting mortgage pressures will not tip Britain into a tidal wave of repossessions. The same that was witnessed during the recent financial crisis, the head of the city watchdog insisted after an emergency meeting with the Chancellor and bankers at number 10 this week. Nikhil Rathi, the chief executive of the Financial Conduct Authority, said that while households were increasingly worried about how to cope with higher debt payments, lenders would not act hastily. Struggling mortgage holders will be given a 12-month grace period before repossession proceedings began as part of the measures agreed with banks and building societies. We can assure people that there will be no repeat of the kinds of experiences we had in the 1990s or in 2008, Rathi said. This is a really challenging and anxious time for mortgage holders right across the country. It's incredibly important for mortgage holders to feel able to speak to their lender early and to have open conversations about any concerns they may have, he added. Bosses from Britain's biggest lenders, including NatWest, Lloyds and Nationwide, were called in by the Chancellor Jeremy Hunt on Friday to help mitigate a mortgage time bomb after the Bank of England raised its key interest rate to 5% on Thursday in an effort to cool stubbornly high inflation. It marks the highest level of interest rates since the 2008 financial crisis and the central bank's 13th consecutive rise, shattering the decade-long age of ultra-low rates. More than 2.4 million fixed-rate homeowners whose mortgage deals will expire by the 2024 according to industry data, will force borrowers into sharply higher mortgage outgoings each month, and it will trigger an average increase in home loan repayments of around £2,900 for each household remortgaging next year, according to figures from the Resolution Foundation think tank. The agreement to ease the impact on mortgage holders facing higher monthly repayments builds on guidance imposed during the COVID-19 pandemic and extended as inflation has soared in its wake. It's similar to the guidance issued to lenders in March 2023 by the FCA. The agreement on Friday it means that those rules were now being made permanent, Rafi said. The FCA now requires mortgage and credit providers to support consumers struggling to make repayments, allowing them to reduce their monthly repayments by extending their mortgage term or switching to interest-only repayments. And homes will not be repossessed until 12 months after a borrower misses a mortgage payment. Crucially, if a borrower switches back to their original payment terms within six months, they can do so without affecting their credit score or needing a new affordability check, the Treasury said in the statement. Consumers will now be able to switch back and do that without that impacting their credit score, Rathi said. And he added that the vast majority of mortgage holders were able to make their repayments at present, but surveys from the city watchdog have revealed mounting concerns among borrowers. It is challenging because families are having to make decisions about their lifestyle, about holidays, about other leisure activities, so that they can keep making their mortgage repayments, he said. But as it stands right now, the repossession levels remain below where they were before the pandemic, and we're going to be very, very vigilant to make sure that there's no repeat of the more severe experiences we had in the 1990s and 2008. A lender should always consider repossession only as a last resort after all other options have been tried and after a full and detailed process. Most modern mortgages require buyers to pay a greater proportion of the property value up front. This means they're also less likely to find themselves in negative equity where their loan is greater than the value of their home. However, a number of people who are financially stretched is very sensitive to where interest rates are, he said. 
Financial markets now predict the bank rate will hit 6% by the end of the year, only starting to fall next summer. And on Friday, the average two-year fixed residential mortgage rate stood at 6.19%, while the average five-year fixed rate edged up to 5.83% on Thursday. And the FCA is also concerned about consumers who may be struggling with unsecured lending. Please don't try to manage this alone, Rathi said, suggesting that people contact Citizens Advice or other debt charities. The watchdog has intervened twice in recent months to try to protect vulnerable borrowers. It secured £47 million of compensation for consumers of credit providers in May after it found that they had failed to spot customers with debt problems or guide them to advice on debt management. And the FCA also banned firms from charging referral fees to customers in debt difficulties that led them to being charged thousands of pounds when they could have been debt free within a year for as little as £90 through a voluntary agreement. The regulator said banks' savings rates, which MPs and the campaigners have criticised for failing to keep pace with rates on borrowing, were also under scrutiny and they'll also be the subject of new rules from the 31st of July called a consumer duty. We are concerned about the savings rate, said Rathi. We are looking at it closely and engaging with the major firms about this to understand how they're making these decisions in terms of the pace with which they are charging their rates, the rationale for doing so, and the potential differential treatment between new customers and existing customers. However, the measures fail to address the impact of rising rates and inflation on renters after official figures showed private rental costs rose at an annual rate of 5% in April. That's the sharpest pace on record dating back to January 2016. In fact, millions of renters across the UK are being squeezed by landlords passing on higher mortgage costs to their tenants, contributing to record rent increases amid the cost of living crisis. Property experts and charities warned the rapid rise in borrowing costs set by the Bank of England, which this week increased rates to 5%, was having a far broader impact than on the owner-occupier's mortgage costs, with potential to trigger a wider crisis in affordable housing. Matt Downey, the chief executive of the homelessness charity Crisis, said hundreds of thousands of people could be left unable to cover their rent and at risk of losing their homes. As mortgage costs increase, we are seeing these costs pass on to tenants and, at a time when energy bills and food costs are so high, the pressures on renters are unsustainable. Low-income renters face a catastrophe. They can't rely on housing benefit as it's been frozen since March 2020 and is completely inadequate. There isn't nearly enough social housing to go around and over 1 million households are on a waiting list for the few generally affordable homes we do have. Official figures this week showed private rental costs rose by an hour rate of 5% in April. That's, that's the sharpest pace on record dating back to 2016, while rents outside of London surged at the fastest rate on record dating all the way back to 2006. It comes as growing numbers of landlords put up rents in response to their own rising costs, while those unable to increase rents are selling their properties after pushing tenants to move. Figures from Citizens Advice show that the number of people seeking help with no fault evictions has more than quadrupled since 2019 to record levels. In a week of alarm over Britain's ticking mortgage time bomb, MPs have focused on the impact of millions of people facing a dramatic surge in their mortgage costs. However, there are almost 2 million more households living in rented homes than those with a mortgage about 9.2 million renters versus 7.4 million mortgage holders. And official figures show less than one third of households in England and Wales own a home with a mortgage. A fifth rent privately, while 70% live in social rented accommodation. About a third, the largest group, own outright. More than half of landlords in England have a buy-to-let mortgage. And figures from UK Finance show that about 2 million are outstanding, with about 230,000 due to exit cheaper fixed rate deals between March 23 and March 24. The Institute for Fiscal Studies warned that interest rates are hitting landlords' borrowing costs, and that was part of the reason for a larger increase in rents. Renters had also typically paid about 24% more than mortgagors on average pre-pandemic. 
Those now paying higher rates in the mortgage market are experiencing what private renters have been experiencing for years now, with almost zero interest from politicians for addressing affordability crises in private renting, said Darren baxter Clow, a policy advisor at the Joseph Roundtree Foundation poverty charity. The debate needs to be broader in housing. The rental side is where some of the real pressures will be. However, Torsten Bell, the chief executive of the Resolution Foundation, said it was almost entirely nonsense that high mortgage costs for buy-to-let landlords were driving up rents. Rents are determined by wages and supply and demand for housing, he wrote on Twitter, adding, of course, higher buy-to-let mortgage bills may make landlords want to raise rents, but that's different to why they're able to do so, which is rising wages. The Bank of England last December estimated that landlords would need to increase rental incomes by about 20% to offset the rise in buy-to-let mortgage costs expected at that time. This would increase the cost of housing for renters, which may affect their resilience. It warned this might lead them to default on unsecured credit or cut consumption sharply, which could amplify the economic downturn highlighting how some landlords are exiting the market amid difficulty passing on higher cost to tenants. Figures from the Royal Institute of Charter Surveyors this month showed almost two-thirds of surveyors have witnessed rising numbers of buy-to-let landlords looking to sell their properties. And estate agents also argue that costs linked to government legislation are leading landlords to sell, including greater protection for tenants in Michael Gove's Renters Reform Bill and new energy efficiency regulations. The measures comes as almost a quarter of private rentals fail to meet decent home standards. However, shortages of private rented homes and the lack of available social housing are expected to drive rents up further. Lucian Cook, head of UK residential research at Seville's, said some buy-to-let landlords will be saying it's just too much more difficult to keep owning a property leaving private renters chasing limited supply. And Polly Neat, the chief executive of the housing charity Shelter, said a big chunk of landlords also did not have a mortgage, meaning many were making a considerable profit as rents accelerate. The increased demand for private rentals driven by years of government failure to invest in genuinely affordable social housing is a major reason why rents are so high and climbing higher. And it's tenants who are feeling the pain of the costs of living crisis more than most. And certainly that chimes with my own research with regard to Australian stress, because whilst mortgage stress is continuing to rise, rental stress is rising much faster and covers a whole larger number of people. So the truth is that whilst everybody is focusing on protecting mortgage holders, the rental sector is where I think a lot of the focus should be and needs to be. There are no simple solutions, of course. You can't freeze rents because if you do, what you're doing is forcing those property investors to cover the costs of rising interest rate costs when they perhaps can't do that. And if you allow those renters to have those payments rise simply because of the cost of the mortgage, then, then rents go up a lot. And of course, the other factor here is that many property investors are indeed trying to get out before property prices fall. So once again, this is another example of the complexity of the housing situation. It's here in the UK and it's rather similar in Australia too. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.